Hello, I'm Nurse B, um, and I'm going to read you one of the Blue Bonnet special books, uh, Grandpa's Hallelujah Handbone. It's written by Joe Haynes, Hayes and illustrated by Antonio Castro. Everyone talks about recycling these days, but when I was a kid, I never heard the word. I don't think it had been invented yet. But, I'm sh but I sure understood the idea behind it because no one in this world was better than my mom at getting the most use out of everything. We lived on a farm and my mom would even reuse the dirt we tracked in from the fields on the bottom of our shoes. When she cleaned the house, she would put all the dirt she'd swept up in a box beside the door. Then she'd make us carry it back out to the fields and scatter it around. My mom would say, as poor as the soil is around here, I can't afford to have you kids tracking all the fertilizer from the fields into the house on the bottom of your shoes. Of course, if you think about it, you'll see that when we carried the dirt back out to the fields, we got more dirt on the bottoms of our shoes. My mom wasn't right about everything, but she sure was right about the soil. It was bad around our end of the country. Hardly anything would grow in that dirt except beans. For some reason, beans always did fine. There was one year when that was the only thing anyone could grow, just beans. Many times when I sat down at the table, I wished there would be something to add, a little interest to the beans I was about to eat. The whole family felt the same way that I did, especially my grandpa. Grandpa had lived most of his life back east, where you can grow all kinds of vegetables. But ever since we moved west to live with us, he got one thing to eat in the morning, noon and night, nothing but beans. And then my dad decided to take a big risk. He filled several sacks with beans and loaded them into his pickup. He drove until he came to a place where beans weren't so plentiful, and he was able to sell his load and head back home. But with all the costs of traveling out and traveling back home again, he didn't make much money from that venture. When he went to the store to spend his earnings, all he could afford to buy was a big ham bone. We brought the ham bone home. When Sunday came around, my mom used it to flavor our beans for Sunday dinner. I'll never forget that dinner as long as I live. Probably don't have to tell you that my grandpa was the one who enjoyed it the most. He took one bite of the beans, flavored with the ham bone, and hollered, Hallelujah! But because my mom was such an economical person, she didn't leave the ham bone in the pot for the whole time the beans were cooking. She just left it in there long enough to give a little flavor to the beans, and then she took it out and hung it on the clothesline to dry. When the next Sunday came around, she used the ham bone again to flavor our beans. Grandpa hollered, Hallelujah! My mom used the ham bone again the next Sunday and the same the next Sunday after that. And then somehow neighbors found out about our ham bone. One day Miss Gillespie came by and asked if she could borrow our ham bone. Her oldest son was getting home from the army that day and they wanted to have a nice meal ready for him when he got there. Of course my mom said yes, but she made Miss Gillespie promise that she'd only leave it in the pot for a little while and then dry it out really well. It was, wasn't long before our ham bone would be gone two or three days out of every week. Every time some family was celebrating a special occasion, a birthday, a baptism, a wedding, an anniversary, they'd come by and borrow our ham bone. My grandpa would always manage to wrangle an invitation to dinner with whatever family was serving some flavored beans. Then one Saturday, Miss McIver came by. Her daughter was going to get married. She asked if she could borrow the ham bone to make a nice wedding supper. My mom said she could. Of course, Nick Ivy knew that she should invite Grandpa to the wedding, so she did. Hallelujah, Grandpa hollered, and he hurried out back to the well to wash his face. Grandpa was leaning over and pulling the bucket out of the well when he felt a tickle in his nose, and then he sneezed, and his false teeth flew out of his mouth and fell into the well. 
Grandpa gave a holler, and we all came running to see what the problem was. We looked into the well, and there, in the little circle of sunlight at the bottom, we could see Grandpa's false teeth grinning back at us out of the water. We didn't know what to do. The well was too narrow for anyone to climb down, and if we didn't get my grandpa's false teeth out of there, where on earth could we find the money to buy him some new ones? But my brother Stan was a scientist of the family, and he came up with a plan. He ran back to the house. Miss McIvy, he said, don't take our hand bone yet. I need it for something. My brother tied the hand bone onto the end of the fishing line. He lowered it into the well and sort of dangled it in front of Grandpa's false teeth. Well, Grandpa's false teeth had grown so used to eating beans flavored with that hand bone that they opened right up and clamped onto it. My brother reeled the fishing line up and up came Grandpa's false teeth, fastened tight to the hand bone. Everyone in the family hollered, Hallelujah! But the false teeth were so fast and tight that we had a terrible time trying to pry them loose. In the tug of war we were having with the false teeth, the fishing line snapped. That sudden jerk startled the false teeth. They loosened their grip on the hand bone, and the hand bone fell into the well. I wanted to tie my grandpa's false teeth onto the fishing line and lower them down to get the hand bone out of there, but my dad said we better not. If the fishing line should happen to break, he explained, grandpa's false teeth would end up clamped onto the hand bone in the bottom of the well forever. Miss McIvy was terribly disappointed. Well, half the county was disappointed for that matter. It was like the end of an era. But do you know that up until that time I had grown up, I grew up and I left home, folk would still come by to get water from our well to cook their beans in? They always said that the beans cooked, that the beans cooked in that water had a special taste to them. They wouldn't come out right and say they tasted like ham. That might be stretching things a bit. And folks around there didn't ever exaggerate the truth, but they would have a special flavor. There's no denying that. Yes, sir. Neighbors would take one taste of beans cooked in that water and, and holler, hallelujah. The end. Hope you enjoyed the story. Thanks.